I don't believe you. Are you serious right now? I didn't do nothing wrong. I'm sick of this shit. You ain't been up for me. Cab ain't been up for me. Nobody. Get out my house. The victor's the light. I am the menace of darkness. You're sounding a lot like your old self lately. Maybe that's who I am. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Mark Dark. And I'm back with another video. If you're new, if you love the shy, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like the video and leave your theories, comments, everything down below. Now tonight we're going to be talking about The Shy Season 5, Episode 9. This is my quick thoughts, early impressions. So down below I want you guys to give me your quick thoughts, early impressions. Y'all let me know exactly how did this episode make you feel after watching it. And man, R.I.P. to your boy Q. We smoking on that Q pack tonight, man. We smoking on that Q pack. Your boy Duda said, you know what, it's time. It is time. Now, the crazy part about this is you can tell that Duda wanted to do something to Q at the very beginning of the season. I talked about this. I had a feeling that they was going to have an encounter. I believe I even talked about it in my final predictions video as well. But Duda, he needed a reason. And in this episode, he got that reason. And he decided to go ahead and just get rid of him. Um, it's crazy, man. Now, he had a conversation with Nuck if you buck. And we learned that Q had a gambling problem, right? He was at the casino. On top of that... This man was taking money out of the Rock organization. Tracy noticed it. She questioned uh, Duda about that. They ended up doing some more research and they found out that your boy Q was taking money. Well, she was pissed off, but we can tell Tracy did not want Duda to take down Q. And you guys let me know what y'all think about this. But I really think it was a mistake for Duda to be telling Tracy what he was planning on doing to Q. Like, why would you tell her? You talking about some, you know, some illegal activity. I know you love her or whatever. You trust her, whatever. You still should not be telling her anything when it comes to taking down a person. See, Duda, he has to be more aware because Tracy did not like it. When Duda told Tracy, you know, his game plan to go ahead and eliminate um, Q and recruit Nuck and, you know, have, you know, Treg running the political thing, pretty much he'll have eyes everywhere. This is what Duda was talking about with his whole game plan. But you were talking about this game plan with Tracy. And in my opinion, you know, it kind of backfired because Tracy's like, no, like he's a father of my child, which we know is Jason. But Jason is not here anymore. Duda said that and that pissed Tracy off. But she's not a part of this whole thing. She don't want, you know, or she didn't want Q being taken out, regardless of if he was stealing money or whatever. She didn't like the whole idea of Duda going back to that street stuff. Which we know, your boy Q said at the very beginning of the season, you know, Duda is for the streets. That's what he's all about. This is what this man really is, or this is who he really is, right? And it goes to show you what he really wanted to do. And based on that episode 10 trailer, oh man, it's about to get crazy, man. It's about to get ugly. It's almost similar to what we saw at the end of season four when Duda was the big bad wolf and Treg had to figure out a way you know, to neutralize him along with Marcus. And now it seems like Jake is getting involved as well. And it seems like Jake will be in trouble in the next episode. And we will be talking about that very soon when we go over that trailer. But man, your boy Q ain't here no more. And it, it, it's kind of sad. I wanted to see more of, um, of Q's character, but I was preparing for something, you know, bad to happen to him based off his interactions that he continued to have with Duda you just knew something was going to happen between the two but it is what it is it's going to be crazy in this next episode I can't wait to see it um, my quick thoughts early impressions on Papa and Jake they're you know they was finally able to squash it finally it was tough it was rough but they end up squashing the little issue that they had we know your boy Papa he was you know he was kind of hurt that Jake did not tell him about Gemma getting pregnant or whatever and he felt some type of way about that and he told Jake that he felt like him and Kevin was not there for him. He was tired of being a sidekick. I mean, Papa pretty much, he let all his feelings out. And I'm just glad that they squashed it. Regardless of what happened within the conversation, I'm glad that they squashed it. They cool. Uh, we saw Bakari. He came and pol he apologized as well. It wasn't easy for him to go out there and do that, but he did it. And Jake was pissed off. He was not trying to talk to that dude. Gemma... She was at least trying to talk to him. She gave him a hug. And y'all know Jake felt some type of way about that. But it seems like, you know, Bakari's character is hitting that 180. He is trying to find himself. And he stated that he wants to be a writer or whatever. He's going to write a book. So, you know, good things are happening for his character. Hopefully we can continue to see, you know, a buildup and great character development for his character and his story. You guys let me know 
What y'all thought about that? And also, your boy Kevin. Man, Nina, she don't be playing around. She automatically assumed the worst. She's like, look, he's selling drugs. And Kevin, he told them the truth. Like, look, this is all from gaming. Like, look, y'all better get, you know, accustomed to the times because people make money off, you know, playing video games and these gaming tournaments. I mean, it's serious out here. This is what Kevin was trying to explain to them, right? Now, Dre, before Nina even questioned Kevin, Dre was like, look, we need to just ask him first. We don't need to just assume anything, at least ask and see what he's talking about. Now, you guys let me know what y'all think about this, you know, because Dre, she asked Kevin. They both asked him, like, look, just show us some proof, because that was my whole concern. Like, he could easily just show them proof. This is what I was talking about in prior videos, but Kevin was like, screw all that. I don't want y'all there. I don't want y'all messing this up. I'm finally good at something, and I don't want y'all taking that away. He said he don't want his moms there messing stuff up for him. So what do you guys think? Did Kevin have a point? Should he have just showed them proof? That way he can get them off his back. Or did he do the right thing? I mean, I understand he was in his feelings. He felt some type of way about them accusing him of selling drugs. And, you know, this whole gaming thing, he's, he is good at it. And in his perspective, he felt like they could mess this up for him. So I understand in both ways. I mean, you know, I did feel like he could have easily just proved it to him. But, I mean, hey, it is what it is. It's going to continue to build up in the season finale. It's going to get crazy within this whole storyline. It seems like, I believe in the trailer, something about going to court or something with Kevin and his, his moms. It's about to get ugly, man. I, that's all I do know. It's about to get ugly within this whole storyline. Kevin been having a good season, and then all of a sudden, boom. You know what I'm saying? He got some family conflict. Hopefully, they can just settle this stuff, and, you know, they can squash it. But we're going to see what's going to happen. Now, my quick thoughts, early impressions on Keisha, Emmett, and Tiffany Rob, this whole storyline. I told y'all, I ain't going to believe nothing that come out of Tiffany's mouth until I see it. I got to actually see it. Now, we already know what we was wondering. We was wondering if Tiffany would just tell Rob the truth and not lie. And she did. She actually told this man the truth, right? Now, I don't know about y'all, but I ain't gonna lie. I feel like Rob took that entirely too easy on her. I know he explained why he did what he did. You know, he said that he grew up in a house full of arguing and he did not want to be like that. He smokes a lot of weed. He just wants to listen and, you know, and do things a little bit different than, you know, the ways that I guess he saw his family doing things. He wanted it to be a little different, right? But still, like, really? You cool? Like, no, ain't no way. Rob, you should have just cut your losses. Cut your losses. Leave Tiffany. Get up out of there. I mean, what would have happened if she did smash Emmett? Like, then what? Like, you would have just been pissed off but willing to accept her? There's no way in the hell I can honestly believe that. I don't believe it at all. It almost seems like Rob got something on the side or whatever. Um, based on the way he's been moving, but there's no way any dude that I know is about to just be that cool with, you know, Tiffany doing what she did. I don't care if she did come out and tell the truth or not. Like, still, this girl was foul, and she was doing it out of spite because she did not want to see Emmett and Keisha together. She knows she doesn't really like Emmett like that, and once he started messing around with Keisha, she decided to go ahead and mess it up, or she tried to, but I'm glad that Emmett and Keisha, they kept everything together. They had a great episode. But Tiffany, ain't no way she should have had a solid episode. She should have been struggling this episode. But Rob, he too good of a person, man. He is too good of a person. It was funny seeing Dante on a little video call or whatever, and he saw Rob. But still, regardless of all that, I just felt like Rob, he's taking it too easy on Tiffany. I would have already left her. You know what I'm saying? I would have been up out of there. There's no way I'm trusting her because she did what she did with Emmett. Just imagine what else she would do. You know what I'm saying? She did tell you, but still, I already know you got to be wondering what else this girl would do. Now, you guys let me know what y'all think about that. Do y'all believe Rob was cool, everything was good between him and Tiffany? Or do y'all think he was a little bit too soft? Because I, I know if it was me, Tiff would be homeless. She would be out there in them streets. She'd be up out of my spot. Ain't no way in the hell I'm messing around with you. I don't let you come into my spot and stay, you and your son. Then you want to go behind my back, plot and plan, trying to mess around with Emmett because you jealous of what they going through. And then you want to come back and lay up, up under me like everything is cool. Oh, hell nah. See, like I told you guys, Rob, he's too soft. He's too nice to Tiffany. It's just a matter of time before she really hurts this dude. Or it's just a matter of time before he does something to her. 
But you guys let me know, what do y'all think about that whole storyline? Now, we'll be going more in depth in the full recap for you guys. So be on the lookout for that. I should be dropping that later on in the day. But man, Treg and Fatima, that whole storyline, man, come on. Like, Treg, you got to make your mind up on what you want to do. It's whether you make your mind up or Fatima exposes you. And I was hoping that that would happen in this episode, but it didn't. It did not happen. Um, and also, one of the last things that I want to talk about is your boy D-Ray Davis. He popped up in this episode as Master Marshawn. A funny scene between him and Emmett. Emmett ended up finding out the truth that this dude, he ain't nothing but an average dude for real. You know what I'm saying? He just did what he was doing to get clout, to get followers, whatever. You know, just to get people to talk. And Emmett found out that, you know, this dude was lying the whole time. He's not celibate. And most of the ideas that he was using was from his chick. But that whole scene was funny. I'm glad that Emmett got to see that this dude was just like him in ways. You know what I'm saying? They both trying to make it. They both out here, you know, trying to get it in. And you know what I'm saying? They both can relate to a lot of different things. Now, you guys let me know. What do you think about this episode? As I told you, I will be going over, you know, more in depth on what happened in this episode in the full recap. So be on the lookout for that. But man, after watching this episode and seeing the episode 10 trailer, oh man, I cannot wait for the season finale because it's about to go down. But I want to thank you guys for all the love, all the support. And I will catch y'all on the next one. But let me get up on out of here, man. It's your boy Mark Dark. I'm out. Peace.